Welcome to my latest video. In this one, I'd like to offer some stories and some tips on how to photograph spring training baseball. I've been doing it for over 40 years off and on, and I'd like to share some of my experiences. The first one will be, depending on what team you're going to go photograph or watch, check into their minor leaguers, their prospects, their top prospects, find out who they are and then photograph them because more than likely you're going to see them the majority of the game anyway. This particular image was of Aaron Judge and it was taken before he was even on the 40-man roster or maybe just on the 40-man roster but he was not yet a regular and in that game he was batting seventh or eighth. He was not yet a star but I went back in the archives and I found the photo. I have several examples of that of Randy Johnson as a rookie with the Expos and uh, Ronald Acuna as a minor leaguer with the Braves. So go ahead and just take all the images, especially now that you're not shooting film. You have a card with thousands of images on them. You might as well use them. Tip number two, find out who's on the coaching staff. A lot of times there's a lot of big name players who are now coaching for other teams. Check into that and take photographs of someone like Barry Bonds. Do your research on certain players. Is there something unique to them? Chipper Jones, a switch hitter. Very rarely do you find switch hitters anymore, but I was able to shoot Chipper from both sides of the plate. So look for things that are unique to that player and photograph it. I cannot stress this one enough, but it's very important. Even if you're there for a game, get there early and go on the back fields. You'll get your best photographs on the back fields. There's less people, there's more access, and that's where you're going to get your best photos. Yes, you will get some action photos in the game if you work it, but I'm telling you, if you go to the back fields, or even if you're there before all the games start, you know, early in spring training, go to the back fields and watch batting practice, infield practice, things like that. That's when you're going to get your best images. If you're an autograph collector, take along something generic that anyone can sign. One day, I just happened to bump into Joe Namath entering the stadium. Before the game begins, while players are stretching and warming up, is also another very good time to get photographs. A lot of times they'll, they'll smile, they'll do other things where you can get more of a portrait look. They'll toss the ball around with each other. It's kind of old school now, but they used to play pepper. But they're also a lot closer to the fence and they're easier to get a portrait shot. So look for that. If you'd like to take photographs of a pitcher, do it between innings while they're doing their warm-up tosses. Mostly because the ushers won't mind and other people won't mind you moving about. And you can usually go right down to the front, take a couple of pictures, and then go back to your seat. If you're young and you're just starting out in your photography, find some young players and chronicle them over the years. If you go back a few times, get them while they're young and then take a photo at the end of their career as well. Each stadium is different. And if you've never been there before, get there early so that you can walk around see where the pitchers are going to warm up make sure you're standing there so that people aren't blocking where you can get your photograph but make sure you walk all around the stadium a few times because you never know there might be a little section where players are warming up or swinging a bat or something that you, you can't really see from behind home plate you have to walk around to find it and then try to get in position where it looks like you are the catcher and the pitcher is throwing to you. It makes for a little bit more interesting photograph, I think. 
if you are an autograph collector, try to get them when they're just coming up as rookies. Take a look at that autograph. Now take a look at that autograph. Same player a year later. Get them while they're young because their autographs turn to crap. Autographs have gotten a lot harder to get over the years. Probably 30 years ago, you could get almost the entire team in one day. Now, you might be lucky to get one or two scribbles each game you go to, and that's if you work it. They've just, you don't have the access, and it's just gotten a lot more difficult to get. One quick story about Pudge Rodriguez. The first year he came to the Marlins, some days after practice, he would come out and he'd tell everybody, all right, line up. I'll sign one for each person that's in the line. And you'd come up, he'd look at your ball, your picture, whatever it was, he'd sign it, and he would look you straight in the eye. And he'd pay close attention to you. And as soon as he saw one person a second time, he was done. And you can appreciate that, that a player will come out and say, all right, I'll sign one for each player or each person, and that's it. And that's what Pudge did. And you knew if you behaved and you stood in line, you'd get an autograph. But it's, it's just not the same way anymore. Dale Murphy, who was a true gentleman of gentlemen, he would come out after games a lot of times, and his wife would be nearby with uh, their station wagon with all their kids in there. And he would stand there and sign autographs near his station wagon until the wife kind of beeped at the horn or gave him a signal. And then he'd say, okay, I'm sorry, I have to go. Because back then he was winning MVPs and everybody wanted a Dale Murphy autograph. But he, he was a true gentleman. The other one who was very good was Tom Glavin. Um... Everybody used to say, hey, did you get your Tom Glue autograph? Because that's what it looks like he would sign, Tom Glue. And his autograph barely changed over the years. Maddox was pretty good, and Smoltz was pretty good as well. Most of the Braves, Chipper Jones was very good as well. You used to always get Chipper J-10. If I ever saw a Chipper Jones autograph... I'd almost wonder if it was real or not, because for as long as I knew from the time he was a rookie on, he would always just sign Chipper J-10. Just a couple of quick stories about autograph collecting and persistence. Way back, you had far more access to players than you do now. This picture with Marquise Grissom and the autograph that I got, um, I was actually sitting at the other side of the bench where Marquise Grissom, Larry Walker, and Andre Dawson were sitting taking batting practice on a backfield. And there were maybe three people back there watching them practice. And I didn't bother them. I sat there and waited patiently because I wanted to get this picture signed. Marquise wasn't a terrible autograph signer, but he wasn't all that easy to get either. So I waited and I waited. Practice was over and he packed up his bag and he was just leaving. And I asked him to sign the photo. And he's, you know, wiped his brow and, oh, my goodness, it's, you know, it's so hot out here and the whole bit. And I just kind of made a joke about it. I said, all right, Mr. Grissom, that's fine. But I just sat and listened to you and Larry Walker and Andre Dawson BS about what shampoo you were going to be using in the shower later on. Don't you think if I waited all through that, I could get an autograph? And he just laughed and he took the picture, signed it, and I thanked him and off you go. So sometimes you just have to wait around and be per persistent depending on how bad you want that autograph. Oh, Another tip about autograph collecting and how to get star players. Go to their site on the day that their team goes to an away game that they're traveling. Because the star players rarely go on bus trips anymore. And so they stay back home, they do a light workout, and then they're gone. And usually there's only a few people that are going to be around their site 
when there's an away game because people think, well, the team isn't there. Well, a lot of the players do stay back and practice. So when they leave and there's hardly anybody around, that's when you're usually going to get the star players. If you go to the stadium and it's it's a game day, there's thousands of people there and, all, and hundreds of them are going to be shoving their way trying to get an autograph of Albert Pujols or whoever the star player is at the time. But you don't do that. You wait. You wait till they go on the road. And then you go to their home stadium. And that's when your best shot of getting the autograph is. One last autograph story. One of my favorite players was Greg Maddox. And we share the same birthday. Well, there was a player strike one year. And so spring training didn't happen until April. And that's when Greg and mine's birthday is in the month of April. So I went to the stadium and most of the players had all checked in and there was no Greg Maddox. And I thought, well, they can't give him off just because it's his birthday. So I waited and waited and finally Greg came through and I wished him a happy birthday. And I asked if he could sign the photo and he said, no. I, I, I can't, I have to go in and report and I'm going to be leaving. I have to tell the team that I have chicken pox. And I said, are, are you serious? You have chicken pox? And he said, yeah, I'm not, I'm not lying. I have chicken pox. So you don't want to be around me. And he ran into the clubhouse and sure enough, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, he came back out and there were, I don't know, three or four of us that were still waiting there. So I asked him again and he said, I'm not, kidding I really have chicken pox and I said fine I already had chicken pox it's my birthday too you know please could you sign the autograph and he you know he said okay I, I really don't want to be doing this you know but he did it and uh, you know it's just the way it is and that's the photo of him signing on the day of, of when he had chicken pox and you see the little two pock marks there I know that wasn't intentional but I'll always remember that picture because of the chicken pox. So I went back to my office and I called a friend of mine. And I said, hey, Maddox has chicken pox. And he said, no. And I said, yeah, just wait. You'll hear on the news sooner or later. I said, I knew it before the Braves did. And sure enough, at lunchtime, ES Penn re reports, Greg Maddox has chicken pox. See, well, I knew it before just about anybody else. If you're a beginning photographer, before you start shooting major league games, go shoot high school games. You'll have a lot more freedom to wander around and you'll learn your equipment. Make sure you really understand your equipment before you go and start shooting major league games. For a few years, I freelanced for Max Preps, which gave me a press pass. So it allowed me to get on the field learn different angles and all the things you need to do to shoot sports. So my advice would be go shoot high school games. The first time I ever shot a spring training game was in 1981 with a Pentax K1000. And I don't even remember the lens, but I'm sure it was manual focus and not even close to the lenses that you would use today. But I have, oh, I don't know, thousands and thousands of these images. And I've really enjoyed my time photographing baseball. Like I said, it's changed so much. Now you have fences everywhere and netting everywhere. It's really difficult to uh, photograph and get autographs compared to the way it was back then. And I know I'm sounding like, you know, the old man but it is true it's it's just much tougher these days so i don't get out and try to photograph nearly as much as i used to now the other thing is i've only been in florida i've never gone to arizona to shoot spring training so it could be different there i would imagine it, you know it doesn't matter it's still baseball but again the thing that i would emphasize the most is go to the backfields that's where you'll see a lot of the up and coming players. That's where you'll get a lot more access. And it's just, if you're into photography or collecting autographs, 
that's where you're really going to get your better images. Now, you know, you'll get your game shots during the game. But even now with the netting and they don't like you moving around nearly as much as you used to, it's, it's not as easy. I mean, you see in some of these older photos that I'm putting up now, there's not even anything in the outfield because the stadiums were much smaller. There were a lot less people there. And it was just much easier to get around. My, I think in 1981, I actually had season tickets for the Expos, which was the home team in West Palm Beach, them and the Braves. And I paid uh, $45 for my ticket, which included parking to all the games. And I think it was 15 or 16 games, $45. Now it's 50 or $60 for one game. So it's just gotten crazy, but I've enjoyed it. Um, again, you just want to take photos at all different times during the games, during warmups, go to the backfields. And if you want autographs, you really have to be polite. I mean, I've seen people push and shove and scream at players. You're just not going to get it that way. You just, you call him mister, you be polite, you don't shove, and eventually you'll get some autographs. But even that, I, I don't even enjoy trying to do that as much nearly as I used to. But I still go out from time to time. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I know I had a good time going down memory lane looking through some of these images that I hadn't looked at in a long time. And um, until next time, take care. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I always respond to everyone. Please like and subscribe if you did learn something. And I'll put out another video here pretty soon. So take care. And again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.